dun, 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 oh, yeah. dun, dun, dun. comments. I don't want that. Dubbing, I don't want that. I don't want that. What the f- oh, So annoying. Old man can't figure out technology. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction. It's of Corbin. It's not me figuring out the technology. It's them not having on their site what they claim they have. That's what all old people think. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction. It's of Corbin. <laughs> you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thanks <laughs> on Patreon. Follow us, count, subscribe, give <gasps> them like button. How's your dad doing? <gasps> it's being uh, an old man bad at technology. He's doing better. He's just being a butthole. Ah, uh, yes. By the apple doesn't far not, fall from the tree. He's not eating his food. Hmm. And uh, they had to give him more than one enema. Mm. So once once he eats and poops, they can transfer him back to physical therapy. So it's it's good advice to eat and poop. It is, and not to confuse the two, which many do. Today we're doing a movie review <laughs> <laughs> of the 2018 film Maha Mahan Nati. Yeah, Ma Maha was Nati. <laughs> That's what he said. You heard him, kids. Maha was Maha naughty. Was naughty. Um, Maha Nati. Maha Nati. Yes. The 2018 film directed by... Uh, directed and, by... And written as well. And written by Nag Ashwin. Uh, and starring... Uh, it's a big, big production, but... Uh, yes, the, but your, the your main person is Kirthi Surdish. Kirthi Surdish, and then there's also Samantha Ruth Prabhu in there. Vicky... Uh, uh, I can't say his last name, and I don't... BJ de Rakanda. And then this guy as well. Those are the th Yes. Uh Dulkur Salman. Yeah, those are those are the main four that I'd say, but uh the, obviously it's a it's a it's a very big movie. Yeah. Um but it's came out in 2018, so it'll be hundred cents for if you haven't watched it. We saw it on Amazon, you can go watch it there. Uh come back. But it's obviously the story of uh, the biography of Yeah, Savitri. Uh the actress who whom we've seen in Maya, Maya Bazaar. Bazaar. Uh, so that's obviously where, where we know her from. Um, other than that, I knew her as kind of almost a Sri Devi type. Of, obviously, Sri Devi was more Hindi industry, uh, but a beloved actress of the time. Uh, other than that, other than people that told me she was that big of a star and um, that she was in Mir, Mir Bazaar. Right. I knew absolutely zilch. Yep. Uh, anyway. And I knew when we, when we reviewed Maya Bazaar, um, I remember some stupid babies letting us know that her, her life had a, a tragic and, and early I think it was early like 40, 43 or something. Something like that. Yeah. Some way too early. Yeah. Uh, anyways, but obviously it's going to be a of you. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Come back. Uh, Rick, your initial thoughts, please. So I have a mixed bag of thoughts, primarily and overall. I think it's a good movie. Mm -hmm. I think that it's especially good for anybody who would be familiar with who she is. Mm. At least I think that's the case. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we have no idea how truthful uh, all... We, uh, taking it at face value. Exactly. And like, you could tell us if there's stuff that was... Like, Wrong. <laughs> this is way, way different than me seeing Elvis because yeah. I know so much more about Elvis. Or, or that, uh, uh, no, that well, uh, any Judy Garland. The, any, the, yeah, any the Judy Garland one that you from like? American, yeah. um, American artistry, way more familiar with it. And even though we're familiar with more Indian artists now, she is definitely someone we weren't familiar with. No. So uh, ultimately, it's a good movie that I liked, yeah. but I was hoping it would be a movie that I would love. Yeah. So... A good movie I liked. Yeah. There's some things I have that are praiseworthy, yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's some other things I have that I had problems with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, I've, I've actually felt the, the very same way. It was, a, it was a mixed bag. I was actually, I was really worried about 40 minutes in, because I was like, this is just, not not in the same way that, like, it, the first 30 minutes of Ega, where I just think, terrible. Right. We and, like, and if you haven't seen our review of Ega, go watch it, because I love Ega. I think of Ega. We both is, do. It's a very fun movie, but the first 30 minutes are, and, are painful. And we both agreed. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> like, start it at the 30-minute mark, and yeah. we're, we're great. Um, so you can watch it. It's not but you, were you feeling that at the first? No, I, no, I wasn't feeling that in terms of, this is awful. It's right, just, not it, at all. It was like... Like, especially like the the acting young, it just almost never works for me. Like yeah. it, 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 little, a lot of over the topness, and maybe it's just I wasn't invested yet. After, but when she almost became an adult, I kind of got 
quite invested in her and in her charisma and in her story. Um, and this is also a very unique biography. Yeah. Because it's... It's not the, like if you were telling the story about like Judy Garland, obviously the one that just came out a few years, even yeah. though obviously you didn't like that one. It, it took a very serious approach to it. This took a very commercial approach, I felt. Very. Like it's not. It's An not accessible approach. It's not digging too deep. Correct. It's telling a story that even though obviously we know nothing, most people, especially in the Telugu or Tamil film industry, probably know everything that's everything going on. more uh, of course. all the scenes that they did all the everything and would it, and would point out things that they realized were so good about it and complimentary and therefore elevates their level of appreciation of the film yeah can't help that but it was very much much more commercial yeah. So it took like a, we're just here, we're going to have a good time, and we're right. going to tell this, it's a, a celebration of her life almost. Yeah. As more of a, than a strict, how we in the West know a biography, right? Correct. Yeah, I put that in my notes, that it was very clear, several things, that it was clearly made with love and yeah. respect for her, and it's clearly a story that they wanted to be acceptable to all age groups. Yep. That this was, we want to find the broadest audience we possibly can, mm -hmm. and not just in age groups, but in sensitivities. We don't want to do anything into the story that's going to cause audience members to turn away from it. We want it to be pretty accessible. Even though I would have loved that. I, I think. Of course. Well, it's it's real life. Yeah. And I don't like, there were some things, for example, when you're talking, we'll begin with just story. There's so much we don't know about her, but because I wanted to know as much as I could. I'd love to know more and I, watch more of her. I read some things about both her and him mm. and the fact that, like, I don't know why they changed. And maybe I misread this, but it was my understanding that he had three wives, not yeah, two. My wife looked that up as yeah, well. Yeah, that he had three wives, not two. Um but those are just small, picky things. Overall, like some of the things I love the most, and then we can get into the specifics, was that it's beautifully shot. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And it's the 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 scope of the production design insane, incredible. It was it was, it was top notch. You can't get you can't really do it better. The undertaking was absolutely massive in scope and scale. And if there was anything I was going to say about it, would be okay. If you want to see. If this industry can do something on the level of like Gone with the Wind mm -hmm. or you name it, that isn't a action special effects film, all pretty much practical stuff or makes you think it's practical, yeah. that puts you in an era and they want to show you the bigness and the details, yeah. That that was the most the impressive part was for me. Insane, top incredible. notch, incredible. The uh, reenactments of Maya Bazaar, oh, it was amazing. Were incredible. I, obviously, I'm sure all the other ones were were just as enjoyable for everybody else. But obviously, that being the only Clearly. one that we've seen, and we love that film so much, it was just so enjoyable to like almost relive it. Yeah, and I think it felt they, like it was behind the scenes. It, it also, it felt they the casting and the the, the guy. <laughs> The guy, the, I thought it was him. Him, I know. I was like, there's no way that's I, it, actually him. It really felt like we were watching behind the scenes footage. It did. I was so impressed. They got they got every little nuance, and I'm sure they did that with every other film mm -hmm. that she was, yeah, she she was, was going in. through. Uh, so, so yeah. let's just talk about her, uh, the, the the main actor. I thought she did a really, really good job. I did and too. And she's really the reason uh, for, for almost the charm of the film and how I got invested into her character because I thought she did a really good job. And I thought even though there's some stuff that like in terms of like there's certain writing dialogues that I was like, eh, it's kind of cheesy or cringy. Sure, or, sure. Or there's, but also I didn't know if like that was – they're trying to <laughs> put you – in the same kind of dialogue and 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 verse that back in, in the, the day. films and back in the day, and so I was like, I don't know if that's what they're doing, so right. I can't really can't judge that. <laughs> yeah, you can't judge that part, but yeah, th those were some of the hurdles I had to get over, uh, especially in the beginning of like some of this dialogue is just ugh, I don't I don't love it. And, yeah, uh, but also like I'm it very well could be that's just like this this taking place in the what the sixties or whatever. Yeah, um, and this is how the movies talked right correct and so i didn't know but i thought she did a phenomenal job of I bringing the emotion uh out uh and uh I, I really got invested into her story knowing nothing and so all everything that came on screen was a surprise to me correct and so i was like oh he they did what right <laughs> especially with the husband i was like this is this is this is scandalous yeah <laughs> 
what, very. What is going on here? Yeah. It sounds like she had a, such an interesting life. Absolutely. That, and then that's why, like, when I'm talking, like, if it was done like a no, I would love, even though I thought this was a good film, I would love a story to be done of, like, that digs deep and uh, yeah. really goes into the nitty gritty of her life. And of everything. So I feel like for a movie that had the runtime that it did. Yeah, it's almost three hours, right? Yeah. I felt like, and this is after doing research, after watching it about her, right? Yeah, yeah. So I felt like they touched on the majority of things but to give you a basic scale yeah. of reference versus... And the way they could have done that, I think, was because they took the, the amount of time they did with the other story going on at the same time, which was the, the woman, our the, what, actress Samantha so much. Brother, yeah. yeah, Samantha, her character and her story. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. was interwoven. If you took that out and did this pure like biography, yeah. you could get into some of the things I wanted to know a little bit more about. Yeah. I wanted to know more about why she was considered such a brilliant actress other than she could make a tear come out of her left eye. I wanted to know more about her philanthropic endeavors and her generosity because yeah. it's my understanding she was such a generous person that people took advantage of her and she let people live with them yeah. and she gave to so many people. Yeah. And to see they showed the that depth generosity, that, but they didn't they show did. the, the, the but not the depth of it and not the usage that yeah. people took advantage of her good heart. Yeah. You got that she was a great person yeah. with a kind heart who was also really innocent, like so many people who are great artists. They're used by the the people business. in the industry yeah. that are the business side, and they're the snakes. Yeah, and they end up go down the list. Yeah, uh, from Judy Garland to Marilyn Monroe to Elvis Presley to Michael Jackson, uh, they're the people that really have a a beautiful heart, and people with ugly ones destroy them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, but yeah, I thought. But that, she, so that's that was. I agree with you. I would yeah. have liked to have gone deeper into those. But parts obviously, of that's her life. not what this film was trying to do. This no. was going a very commercial. Correct. And so I, I adjusted my my thinking uh, very early on because I was like, obviously, this is no, they're not doing the normal yeah. as I know a big biography. Yeah. Um, but I th I thought she was definitely the, the the strongest actress in the entire film. Yeah, I agree. Um, but let's talk about her her husband as well, who I thought did a good job. Um. It, it was just, it was such an interesting, it was, it was, it, it wasn't like a unique story, his story, no. outside of their marriage, and that was, that was unique in terms of him wanting to be with her, but being married, and like, it's like, it's weird dynamic. Also, yeah. that, uh, for a while, I was like, is he just marrying two people at the same time? Right. I, and then obviously you found out he left his, his, his first wife, but they never went into the third wife. Right. Or the and, cheating. Or and the, I want to know, because... They make it seem almost virtuous in that he explains to her at the outset of their relationship that the marriage he has to this first wife was one he never wanted ever in the first place. And he's never been in love with somebody except her. Mm. Now, you can look back at that afterwards and say, oh, that's the line he used with everybody, <laughs> which may be the case. Yeah, who knows? But I, I, I felt that there was, and it may have been in the writing, it was, uh, I don't want to say it's shallow. That's a bad analogy. It was more on the top of everything. Surface level, for sure. More surface level. The whole in, film in knowing, surface yeah, level. In knowing versus diving deep, deep down into who this man was. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, and that's where there were points where I felt I wasn't able to connect more deeply than yeah. I would with a different kind of telling. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, uh, but I thought he did. He did well. Uh, I thought Samantha. Obviously, I thought it was it was super interesting what they decided to do with Samantha and VJ, in terms of how they want. It's not a new telling. Obviously, there's been many many films that go like, oh, I'm trying to find a story, and then the story and the gets story told, gets told, and they, they actually are connected because of the story. They're writing the story, right. and then you're seeing it through what they're writing. Right. Is that's not new, right? Um, but they they added like this love element, so they got their own kind of love story yeah on top of that right but I, I thought she did a good job and so did he yeah and, and kind of their small little niche role that was kind of a, almost a side movie in and of itself yeah her her best moment for me is one of my favorite moments of the film and that's her last scene when she's talking to her there in a coma yeah 
that monologue she has, I yeah. thought was very nice. Yeah. Very, uh, very believable. I thought the, the wedding scene was funny. <laughs> yeah, I did too. <laughs> I thought that was good. I did too. Um, so, so I thought VJ and Samantha both did well in their roles. It, yeah, you, you never know if that, that was actually like necessary, like that entire, the, the telling part, or right. if you could have literally just told this story without having to... I, I again, with that runtime and the lack of the deeper depths, yeah. like I would have... We saw her race her car for a, like a blink of an eye, but apparently she was a huge collector of vintage cars and loved to race. I would have liked to have known a little bit more about that side of her. And again, the thing yeah. I would have liked to have known more is... What was it other than popularity that made her such an incredible actress? Yeah. Because she's considered like the, that's the name of the movie. Like mm. she's the actress. Just like, well, just like Shredevi. It's yeah. Just... It's like, so what were the, I mean, we knew we could dance, she could dance and she could sing. But if someone were to make a movie about Shredevi and we didn't get to see all of who she was as an artist, I would feel gypped. Yeah. Knowing what I know about her. Yeah. Um, so I think this is one of those things where nobody would get offended by it and no one would be disappointed by it. Yet, I think there's a level of, there's a lot more I would have liked to have seen. And there mm -hmm. were a couple of things that were bothersome for me, like the, the pacing at times with the length of the film. Yeah, it was a three hour film. It was, it was big, and, and I, I couldn't help but think, is one of the reasons for the three hour runtime because we have to have a three-hour runtime because that's what audiences expect and that's what the theaters expect us to do, which I understand a business standpoint, but that's, for me, a never good reason to justify a runtime. If your runtime is based on we got to keep people in their seats because that's what they expect and they got to make money at concessions, that's not a really good story. <laughs> yeah. you know, what's my motivation? Draw this out. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> and the other thing I noticed, uh, and it was fresh on my mind because of the uh, S.S. Rajamouli and... and um, Russo Brothers. Russo Brothers interview. Mm. Remember, he asked the question and they said, okay, story, character, story, character, story, character. That is what is compelling to us. And he agreed, but then he added a third element, which emotion. was emotion. Yep. And I felt that here. It's the same industry. And I felt many choices, especially with score, but with acting, with direction, were specifically driven by, we have to get them emotional. Yeah, it's 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 an interesting go not just about Telugu industry, but it's in Indian film industry. Um, some do it more than others, right? Uh, but it's it was especially back in the day. It's just that that is an element. Yeah, that they, has they, been it's part of the Indian film industry. Right, it's considered a valid tactic. Yeah, right, because people want that emotion, and they right. call films an emotion, not a film. Right. So it's just it's a unique aspect to Indian cinema. That Correct. Is so you, you, you and I'm not saying there's anything right or wrong with it. It's just it's a different take. That it's a very different approach. Very different approach. Uh, it didn't bother me too much in this one, but I d I can definitely see that. Yeah, but I I kind of gave it a little grace because I knew I was like this is very. Yeah. Anytime you do a commercial film, it feels like they do that a lot more. And it wasn't anywhere remotely close to the kind. See, there's. I'll finish that sentence. There's a big difference between these these comparisons. This to me wasn't egregious. Mm. I I could see that that was part of. We have to have a great story. We have to have great characters, and we've got to get them emotional. Mm. And that that is part of the DNA of storytelling in Indian yeah. cinema. Yeah. However, when it becomes so egregious that it borders on and then surpasses just downright manipulation, like the stuff we saw happening in uh, um, eighty. Uh, 83, yeah. where we were like, okay, that's maudlin. Stop yeah. already. Time out. But even that, for a lot of Indians, they've go it's so much a part of what they've grown up with and known, they do not have a problem with it. And you are absolutely 100% entitled to saying that ought to be what is done that way. I'll, I won't ever see that yeah. as a useful tactic in cinematic or theatrical storytelling because to, for me, it doesn't reach the higher level purposes of what yeah. you're doing in the art form. You, but that doesn't mean that uh, we have to agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think overall I, I, I enjoyed this film more than any gripe I had uh, with this film. Oh, I also want to talk about the score. I thought the score was wonderful in terms of like the songs. They were like almost La La Land, some of them. I, right? The staircase sequence. Ah, oh, it was amazing. Was straight up reminded me of 
the Griffith Observatory sequence in La La Land. It was amazing. It was. It was gorgeous. That, I, I was watching thinking, that is worth the price of admission, that number alone. Yeah. I'm so, and I'm actually really, really glad we didn't see that. Yeah. <laughs> that that was left as a surprise in the film. Yeah. Because that, that blew me away. Yeah, and there was, a, I think, a few songs... Uh, in this film, that one obviously being the the, the showstopper in terms of just the, the visual awe yeah. of it. Yeah. But I, th- I thought the, all the songs in this were really, really nice. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. Added to the, obviously, commercial feel yeah. of the film. When stuff like that happens, you're like, we're not taking ourselves very seriously, I feel yeah. like, here. Yeah. Um, and so it, it kind of gets you a little more relaxed and so as the film went on it took me about 45 minutes to really get invested obviously you got two hours after that and so it's, <laughs> you had a whole nother film to uh, really get invested after right. i wasn't invested yet yeah 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 uh, in the story because it's a three-hour film yeah uh, and some you don't always feel it i feel like a lot of times the pacing was good but there was sometimes you definitely felt the the, the runtime yeah <laughs> i yeah it's, I, that, it's, 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 you have to be, I mean, RR did it, but you'd have to be like a really, really insanely good film to not feel the runtime in a three hour movie. Yeah, because like we didn't have a, I don't think, if you look back at our view, I don't think we had a problem with the Lagan runtime, and that's insane. But it's, it's because half, Lagan right? is that good. It's nearly four. <sighs> but it's because Lagan is just that good. And that's where the difference for me in this film as to why I would say it's good and it didn't enter the great realms for me. Because like I said, mm. that number was great. It had yeah. great moments. Yeah. But as an overall, overall film, there were parts of the runtime and the pacing that, that began to drag for me. Mm. And then there were some points where I, I saw, like, I wished it had been different in the depth. But I can't hold that against it. Yeah. However, there were moments where... I was like, okay, that doesn't make sense to me. And it wasn't a fantasy moment. Like, when he jumps on the hood of the car and he does what had happened to, to you know, he reenacts the moment of jumping on the car and telling everybody, mm-hmm. I love this girl. He jumped on the car, but it took a full 60 seconds of screen time before the driver said, hey, get off my car. <laughs> and all I could think about was, why has the driver let him do that to his car? <laughs> And there were several that's, moments that's like that. That's a weird thing, Rick. No, <laughs> that's reality. I know, but it happens in movies, man. Well, it, <laughs> it, it happens like in a movie musical when it's very clear that what we're doing right now is a stretching. But that wasn't articulated. Yeah. What, what, what happened was it was a guy was just driving along and he jumped on the hood of the car and it took a full 60 seconds. And then even after he got off the car... There was no, there was nothing. And there were moments like that that weren't a fantasy moment and weren't overly dramatic that had moments like that. Mm. Anytime I start to question, well, what? That doesn't seem authentic or real. It gets away my suspension yeah. and disbelief. Yeah. So that's all. Very, gotta, very personal, slightly picky stuff. Yeah. It's all good. Uh, so that, overall, I think. And like a was, terrible slap. You know, there's like a slap sometime. You're like, yeah, they didn't really slap them. <laughs> um,. Yeah, so uh, overall, I, I liked the film. I think it was a, it was a good film. Yeah, There's a lot of, g- lot of points with some, that some were really things. good. Some really great things, production, production values, design. some songs, some performance, especially our lead. Yeah, uh, did a, a, a really really good job uh, with some intermittent stuff there. But uh, yeah, you guys can let us know how authentic this film was in terms of did it stay true to her story and to her person and to her hood. person. Yeah, is there? I would love if they would. Um, do they ever really do this in terms of? taking a beloved person and not commercializing it in terms of just telling a nitty gritty of her life kind of story. Mm. Um, or maybe she doesn't have a nitty gritty life. Maybe, maybe it's no, but obviously you could go into more depths into certain aspects. Alcoholism is a, is a gritty aspect of somebody's life. It is. I'm thinking about a good person and they kind of did it in Elvis. Cause they didn't do it in 83. Obviously no. it was very commercialized as well. No, but like, I mean, I'm thinking about American films that are biographies. One that went into my head about one that got real nitty gritty is Mommy Dearest. But you have to do that because Joan Crawford was crazy. Yeah. Have they done a Sri Devi one? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. But see, the thing for me was just the deeper aspects of who she was as a generous person, a collector of vintage cars, and an incredible thespian that mm-hmm. we didn't go deeply into. I felt they did a substantially good job of her, why she began to drink and how drinking became a part of her life. And the financial problems she got into that were really mismanaged by those around her, not so much her. Yeah. Um, and it's very hard for somebody 
who was pretty squeaky clean, like Elvis, the Elvis biography, Elvis didn't have scandals, man. He, yeah. he, he, I mean, the one thing he did do was he Come on. was, you can, he was philandering. We, we know that. It's why, one of the reasons why Priscilla left him was because he, and, but everything else about him, he really wasn't, he was a good person. So there's not much drama. In Don't ask his ex-wife, though. <laughs> no, I think she would, she would say that he was a good person. So. Anyways, let us know what you thought about the film. What should be our next uh, Telugu film and her as well? Yeah, I'm talking like um, like uh, the, Savi uh, Savitri. Yeah, Savitri and some of the films she did that would show us what it was that made her such a magnificent she did, actress. She did a lot of different industries. She, yeah, she, she did. did. I think not just Which Tamil and Telugu. Mind boggling. She did. I think uh, some Bengali and even some Hindi as well. I believe. I could be wrong. And other biographies. Yeah. Let us know what you thought about the film. People we should know. Down below.